We have been covering since July the 15th, first time we had George Webb on, investigative journalist, since July the 15th, the, um, the events of the attempted assassination of President Trump. And we have gone from uh, from the, the investigation has led George to California. It's, it's led him to Portland, Oregon. It, of course, it, it led him to um, uh, uh, Butler, Pennsylvania, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and parts thereof, and other parts. Um, uh, so we've been all over with this. We've covered a lot. But the news just keeps changing, and we keep getting more information. The more information we get, to me it seems, the, the more likely it is that this was a government hitch up. Like the guy said on the comedy routine, it's, it's like the DMV put this on. Uh, and of course they boxed us. So let's go to the Dude Mayor Hotline and uh, say hello to him. And you can find George at George Webb, that's W-E-B-B dot substack dot com. He is RealGeorgeWeb1 at Twitter dot com as well. George, uh, good morning. Brother, how are you? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, well, the investigations now brought me to Chicago and Antifa. And... Um, and you remember the Antifa van uh, with uh, Yurik, our pal Maxwell Yurik, Mr. Antifa, uh, with the explosives and everything somehow leaving uh, uh, leaving Butler. And where else to, would you go if you were an Antifa leader than Antifa Chicago a DNC convention right now? You know what? There is so much. Uh, every time I, you and I talk once a week or so, I tell you, like, there's so much has happened since the last time we talked. I don't yeah. know where to start. Hey, I want to. I want to start here with this. Okay, I want to run you uh, my theory, uh, and you tell me uh, what your investigation says about my theory, and then we'll talk about the, uh, where you're at with your investigation. Fair enough. Sure. My theory is this. And this is only pertaining to the day of. If I'm and and I checked your map, your map is correct. Your walking map on Google. If Crooks is walking towards the Butler, uh, the Butler Farm Show grounds, which he is, in the newly released videotape, it clearly shows him in his khaki shorts, his gray T-shirt, his nappy uh, long white hair, or long long blonde hair, and the brogan boots and his glasses. Um, and if the timestamp is correct, at four twenty-six, according to Google, he is about seventeen minutes walking from his car. There's no way he can walk back to his car, go get the duffel bag, and then get to the fairgrounds to be seen at 5.40 p.m., is there? No, and we've got two different people who place him at 4.26. One says on the picnic table, another person says on the retaining wall, those are about 50 feet from each other, so he can't be in two places. Um, And I go with the guy who actually is the law enforcement officer, Greg Nickel, who says he's there, and the other guy, Woods, the guy who was a shooter who took a picture of him at 426. So he's got to be walking through the vendor area of the fairgrounds much earlier than that. Uh, so he's casing the joint, and remember, he has to drone the place at 350 to 4 o'clock. So he's there an awful long time. Okay, so then the second part of this that just boggles my mind, Maggie, can you go to George's Substack and go back about three articles and pull up the video from Fox News? Fox News sends the woman who was there on the afternoon of July the 13th, the the, the woman reporter, I forget her name. She is there. Yep. At, you know her? I don't know her, but yeah, the white van uh, uh, interview with oh, okay. Billy Thomas. So on July yeah. the 13th, she is there the whole afternoon where we, uh, you know, we got on air six minutes after we got on air. Trump is shot at 611. We're on air at 616 or 617. So, and we're on air for three hours. We're covering the whole thing live. Um, uh, and she is on, she's giving live reports back to the studio. The next morning she shows up and she goes and interviews this guy who lives around the corner from the fairgrounds. And he tells her about this white van. And he tells her that this white van, uh, that at about uh, that after they got back from wherever it was they, they, they had gone, you know, they had to go through the police blockade to get to their house. They get to their house, and he says, what, 15 to 20 cop cars has surrounded this white van. And he goes, the guy goes, yeah, I got a good look at it. It had Arizona plates on it. I mean, the dude is completely, he's not drunk when he comes in. And he tells her, and she is like looking at him like, I don't, like, like this is, 
is like the story. This is where the story is going. On Sunday morning, George's story is going towards the white van, and 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 he says they brought the bomb sniffing dogs. They were in there. They were looking at it. You know, they had the robots out and everything for about two hours before I guess they finally cleared it. And then remember she in the tape, she asked him, you know, did you think you were in danger? He goes, well, I mean, I was pretty far away. I don't know if I was going to get blown up at that distance. So it is clear that she thought, he thought, and the physical, visual evidence of Saturday evening, July the 13th, suggests that that van was filled with explosives. But that van is not Thomas Matthew Crooks' vehicle. He drove the Hyundai Sonata. So... Thanks to George Webb, investigator journalist, we had the eyewitness of the guy that was coming out the Sheets store who heard the cop radio go off saying that there was a bomb threat and they were looking for a white van. Now, am I right so far? Yeah, well, blood in the sink, throw blood in the sink in there for a suspected shooter and maybe the dogs follow the blood track, we don't know, uh, to the van. But, um, you know, there's various folks out there saying, well, no, it's a drunk guy who lost his car. Well, why is it taking a month to get the license plate from the Butler police and then the FBI? I mean, why is this total lockdown? Like it's the combination of the safe of, you know, Fort Knox, you know, they, I can't get a license plate <laughs> number. Right. So, uh, there's an obvious, uh, there was a second, the people don't realize, Mike, there's two parts to the Trump assassination. One, okay was 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 the shooting but the second one was to try to get explosives in find a place in the fence to get explosives into the podium and then that's why uh, uh, crooks had the radio transmitter he was going to try to blow trump up right and people have just just dropped this whole bomb uh plot out the whole gunpowder plot they've just dropped it out of uh, cognizance but the bomb squad was there they looked at the bike that was there as a, bo a potential bombing um, and, you know, the bomb-sniffing dogs, this is a real threat. So I'm saying Trump going forward has to look at it for not just shooters, but also bomb plots. Uh, and finding explosives in the van and finding explosives in Yurik's car, uh, excuse me, in, in Crook's car, that's his trainer. That's his Antifa trainer. So uh, that's who's teaching him how to make bombs. So so the two go together, and that's why we got to look at that as a part of the investigation. Okay, I want to, and uh, George Webb, investigative journalist on our Dude Maker Hotline here with us. I want to focus in now. We found Crooks' car and his walk across AGR grass to the Butler Farm show without a backpack, rifle, or rangefinder. My thought exactly, I'm going like, so at 426 we have video, there is no backpack. Which he's not carrying a backpack. So obviously then the backpack has been smuggled onto the ground somewhere earlier in the day. So it's already, he has pre-positioned the asset, correct? Yeah. And but also remember he has the drone at three fifty to four o'clock. Right. Uh, so so now where's the drone? And then, you know, he supposedly buys a ladder. Uh, the original story they had was he bought a ladder. Uh where's the ladder? It's it's not in the it's not in the sonata. And the thing is, why is it uh, citizen journalists that have to find the actual location in, in front of the uh nursery? You know, they didn't put out the picture of the car. We had to publish the picture of the car. So all of these things that would help people place and put together a really tall guy with long hair, which would be easy to kind of pick out, have been suppressed. Remember, we've only been getting third pay, uh, grade pictures of That's crooks, right? <laughs> right? So, so, and why and why they do that is so that other people who are taking video around that area, they they're not going back and going through their video. They're thinking, well, crooks is a third grader with you know uh, combed hair with one of those little you know five cent combs they used to give us before school pictures <laughs> <laughs> right he doesn't look like a six foot four tall guy out of zz top you played zz top earlier you know so he, or maybe somebody else but leonard skinner right he doesn't look like the six four lead guitarist and leonard skinner because then they would place him they would place the car they would say oh yeah i saw him going back and forth back and forth between the corolla or excuse me, between the Sonata, or he was going across this field. I watched him walking across this field to the white van. And that's what we're, all we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, do the timeline so people can go, yes, that's what really happened. How did he get the gun? How did he get the drone? How did he get all the ammunition? How did he get all that stuff up on the roof? Uh, where did he hide it? Uh, these are the questions. It, didn't they sweep the place before they brought 
uh, you know, uh, the team in with a dog, you know, to see if there was a dog That's what there. I said. Uh, yeah, all these things, all these things. Now, now uh, okay, so uh, let's go back to last Friday when you want to have a uh, uh, talk last uh, Tuesday. So let's go back uh, to last Friday. Clay Higgins' report come out. comes out. You have a piece of, out about this. You're sad to see that Clay Higgins knew nothing about the white van. It's not, there's, there's no mention of it whatsoever. But a new video comes out on Friday. We have another now uh, uh, rooftop shot here of a Secret Service agent who, by the way, you can, can be seen down on the ground earlier in another uh, uh, body cam, uh, a piece of body cam footage that has been released now so it's the same guy kind of looks like the dude from the the matrix uh yeah <laughs> mr mr uh, mr anderson it looks, it looks like mr anderson um and he has the right sunglasses and everything there are so many things that stink to high heaven about this i don't know where to start Let, let's start with, the, with 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 something that i know that you have have covered with this who you think that this nickel guy took the photograph of crooks from the second story window, looking down on him. And it's so clear to where if you blow that image up, you can see actually has his phone out. And if you were there looking at that live, you would have been able to probably read what was on his phone. Am I right? Well, you'd come close to it. Um, you literally, you could drop a uh, watermelon outside of the window where uh, Greg Nickel is mm -hmm. and drop it on the, on the head of Crooks. Uh, who's who's texting now? If you thought he was a you know a suspicious character or whatever, you just walk down the stairs, literally twenty feet, and say, "Hey, dude, what are you doing here?" Um, and then there's another guy who says this guy followed us in. The guy named Woods, who also says, "I'm out. Like I'm done with my shift at four twenty six. That's an odd shift change time. First of all, it's odd. <laughs> it's odd to have a first shift." Before the president ever comes on, what <laughs> you guys are guarding the chickens, you know, over there, or <laughs> guarding the guarding the rutabaga <laughs> across the street? I mean, why do we have a first shift at all? I, I say it's to make sure there's as few people as possible when they all have the mass exodus leaving the the, the sniper windows. I mean, to me, if let's say there's six guys, I would want all six when Trump's on stage. I wouldn't you want would three think guys <laughs> Three guys to leave at 426. That's an odd shift change time. It was almost like the shift change was predicated on Crooks coming there and sitting on the wall. Oh, he's here. I'm out now. Right? Now three of us can leave. Right? It's just an odd time to have a shift change. Is there a possibility, George, that the, uh, the, the, that this, uh, this, the three snipers at the windows that left, is it a possibility that they were radioed, uh, and I guess if we had all the communication, we, we could probably piece this together, is it possible that they were responding to the call-in of the white van and the bond threat, and they thought that was more important than guarding the roof? Well, uh, that's not what Thomas said. He said he came and he saw the van was there, and there was no police at four-ish in the afternoon. It was only later after sort of toward nightfall that they'd kind of surrounded the van. So I don't believe that to be true. I think it was later. Okay. Uh, it would it would be in the Fox interview, but I don't think, no, Billy, uh, the guy named Woods who says I'm out, this was in the New York Times first story, uh, she's saying, I see a guy who looks weird. He came in behind us with his car. He snuck in behind us with his car. Mm -hmm. um, well, and he saw me take my rifle out to the, uh, my car, so he knows you guys are up there. To me, that's like I see Lee Harvey Oswald. I see he has a <laughs> Carcano in his in his hand. Doesn't look like he's up to much. I gotta go. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. That was in the New York Times. So again, the odd shift change, the idea of shifts at all, doesn't make any sense. It seems like they have six there. They have a big pizza party, right? And then they all leave when Crook shows up. It seems like they want as few people as possible when the when the deal goes down. Okay, um, uh, and there is uh, there, there's more. George Webb uh, uh, from GeorgeWebb.substack.com, and it's uh, he's doing a, 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 a great job reporting all of this since the day of he actually traveled there. Now you're in Chicago following the the Yurik leak, so I, I want to go to your post from August the 18th. 43 skidoo after 43 meetings, Greg Nichols should know Matthew Crooks. Now, do the, the logs at the Claritin shooting range show that Nickel was there 43 times when uh, when Crooks was, Crook was there 43 times? No, 
they, they, they don't show him there 43 times, but they show uh, Crooks there 43 times. Okay. What they, sh- what they show is a guy at DHS uh, paying $1,000 for four to five people, and the, the f- four or five shooter kids or student shooter kids. The student shooter kids are paying a dollar. Crooks is one of the kids paying a dollar. Um, so it's sort of like, uh, you know, like the team coach pays the fee for everybody and then everybody else pays a dollar to show that they are willingly participating rather than being forced against their will. That I think he's over 18 when this happens. So this is the period of August until the shooting, uh, 43 trips, but it's definitely state sponsored. It's, it's, it's DHS, uh, paid, not, not all of the 43 trips are paid by DHS, but many of them are paid by DHS. So this is a direct connection to state sponsorship. Let's go to George Webb, uh, uh, real George Webb won uh, on August 15th. I hear Tony is now denying he started a tactical shooter program last August. There is a tweet here from some woman called Frau Hodel replying to at Tony Guy, and she says, but this is you, right? This is August 8, 2023 tactical training pilot program, Sheriff Tony Guy, Beaver County Sheriff's Office. Is he denying that there was a tactical training pilot program? No, he's not denying that he actually went to Claritin because that's quite a distance from Beaver, where he lives in Beaver, uh, Pennsylvania. But but his deputy, Greg Nickel, is seen often shooting there at Claritin, and he's actually in a Claritin. The, the Can-Am, the Canadian-American uh, sniper games were after. Uh, they just happened to be in town, and they were all at my hotel the day after yeah, the right. shooting. I find, I find that odd. And he was definitely participating on the Claritin team. So, uh, so I'm not. So what Tony does is he does these corner, you know, denials. He says, "Well, I never went to Clarendon. My deputy went out there 50 times and shoots for the Clarendon team, but I never went there." So this tactical training program started in August. I say it started uh, basically when the Iranian came in June of 2023 and, and dropped the cash, and then they started this tactical tr- training program. And Tony tweeted out about it. We we. Uh, Tony Guy uh, put out a thing, and it has a white van in the picture. <laughs> so <laughs> it is, I'm so so hard, uh, so happy to start the tactical training program, and there's the white van in the picture. Okay. So we think the white van was it was picking up all these kids and taking them. All right, no, no uh, we have two minutes left here, so I, I, I want to go now to uh, your tweet on lone gunman constantly texting himself before shooting. Uh, this doesn't also doesn't make any sense to me. If this guy is in the second floor window and he's looking down at this suspicious guy and up to, where, to where he took a picture of him, I cannot fathom, as you said, well, if you're taking pictures of the kid, why don't you go down there and ask him what the hell he's doing? One. Secondly, the fact that he is constantly on his phone. You, you know, there's several photographs of him uh, on his phone. Who is he texting? Why hasn't the FBI or whoever released the, the contents of the phone? I mean, this is yeah. just this is mind-boggling here. The, yeah. the, the, isn't President Trump entitled to an explanation of who he was texting? Well, we have the the Butler Township people saying that there was volunteers there from other townships from other counties. The only other county there was was Tony Guy's Beaver County, right? And the only other the only other volunteer team we think is is Urich and and Crooks um, and the demolition team, if you will. The people all you know, you all wear the same team shirts, so everybody can identify you, you know, like at a race or whatever. Right? They're all wearing gray. The demolition team shirts, and they're all wearing white shorts or white pants. So there's a confusion there, but everyone thinks the demolition team is supposed to be there. Now, Crooks comes in and says, I'm here, I'm here at uh, 426, and that's when three people immediately leave. So it just seems too fishy. It seems like they only want as few people like John Wilkes Booth. They only want one John Parker watching, <laughs> you know, Lincoln. And then they say, hey, John, there's free alcohol next door. You know, they want as few people as possible protecting the president at the critical time. All right. So where to next? Are you are you staying in Chicago for the rest of the week? I got to go down to the Israeli consulate. That's where the action was. I did a show there from yesterday and we're going to go back to the consulate. That's where we think if they bring in, we should keep all vans out of near the raised Israeli consulate. And if no white vans, please, no, no Uric, uh, Timothy McVeigh vans, 
near that area. And I think they they should just really be watching because this could really turn into a tragedy if you had somebody, a really crazy on TV guy like, like Yurik, uh, drive in here. Yeah, it is. Uh, all right. Well, keep up the great work. Stay safe, brother. Thank you, as always, for your reporting. God bless you. We'll talk to you next week.